1688, during the Glorious Revolution, William of Orange outed King James II from the Scottish and English throne. This forced Scottish nobles to meet at the Convention of Estates in 1689 to decide whether or not to accept William as king. Thanks in part to James's poorly worded letter to the convention, they decided he had forfeited the crown and they accepted William as king. But some remained loyal to James, notably the Viscount of Dundee. After leaving the convention and being declared a fugitive, he began the uprising by raising James's banner in Dundee. But he received very little support in the city, so he travelled north to raise an army from the Highland clans. Now, I should explain the Jacobites a little bit. To simplify, they believed in the divine rights of kings, therefore they thought that King James had been illegally removed from the throne. Thus, James was also Catholic and therefore he had a lot of support amongst the Catholic and Episcopalian Highland clans. However, these clans would sometimes swap sides based on old rivalries. On the other hand, the Scots-speaking Lowlanders, who were largely Presbyterian and Covenanters, backed William. Also in England, the large Catholic populations of Lancashire and Northumberland backed the Jacobites, plus the Tories, a political group chiefly made up of the descendants of Civil War Cavalier nobility, remained loyal to James and his Stuart household. So this was a dispute largely based on religion and the power of the king. But back to Dundee. He gained some supporters and defeated an army of Scottish Covenanters at the Battle of Killiecrankie in July 1689. However, he died in the fighting and the uprising quickly began to fall apart. Meanwhile, William crushed James at the Battle of the Boyne in Ireland in 1690, effectively ending Jacobitism in Ireland. Amnesty was offered to Jacobites who took an oath of allegiance. However, Clan Macdonalds, who had not taken the oath before the deadline, were massacred by Scottish Williamites at Glencoe ending the first uprising. Fast forward to 1707 and the Act of the Union united England and Scotland under Queen Anne. The French, who were fighting England again during the Spanish War of Succession, tried to take advantage of the discontent caused by this. James had at this point died and his son, known as the Old Pretender, was sent to Britain with an army, but the British Navy prevented him from landing. Jacobite sentiment grew again when, in 1714, Queen Anne died and the crown was given to her closest living Protestant relative, George I of Hanover. Then, in 1715, the Whigs defeated the Tories in the election. The Tory nobles quickly began to raise armies to overthrow George, however, by now, France and Britain were at peace. In southwest England, the planned rebellion had failed before it even began, but in northern England and the borders, the Tories managed to raise an army and move as far south as Preston by October, but within a month they too were crushed. Meanwhile, in the Highlands, the Earl of Mar had raised a large army and captured cities like Aberdeen, Perth and Inverness. But clans which were loyal to George, like the Munros, soon defeated them at Sheriff Muir, ending the Second Rebellion. However, in 1718, the War of the Quadruple Alliance put Spain and Britain at war. Spain sent around 300 troops to Scotland, but they lacked local support and were quickly beaten at the Battle of Glen Shiel in June 1719. Despite some intermittent plans to return, it wasn't until the 1740s, during the Austrian War of Succession, that the Jacobites planned to invade Britain again with the help of the French. However, in 1744, a storm devastated the French navy and these plans. Undeterred, the son of the Old Pretender, aka the Young Pretender or Bronny Prince Charlie, sailed to Britain himself in 1745, arriving in the Outer Hebrides in August. A few clans joined the cause and together they marched south and took Edinburgh in September. Due to the war in Europe, there were few government troops in Scotland and those that were there were quickly defeated at Preston Bands. In November, the Jacobites decided to move south, along the west coast with over 5,000 men equipped with French weapons. Within a month, they had taken Carlisle, Preston and Derby. However, they lacked the support they had expected, many deserted, and the French didn't look likely to invade. So, unable to fight the government's armies that defended London, they began to retreat to strengthen their position in Scotland. But they were being pursued by a large British army under the Duke of Cumberland. After training through the winter months, the British army assaulted the Jacobites in April 1746. The Battle of Culloden saw the well-trained British troops crush the Jacobites' highland charge and emerge victorious. This forced Bonnie Prince Charlie to flee and Jacobitism effectively ended in Britain. In the violent aftermath of the rebellion, the Duke of Cumberland killed many Jacobite supporters and their families. Plus, a series of laws stripped the clan chiefs of their authority, ending their feudal rule of the Highlands. Clan chiefs and Scottish and English landowners would later begin to expel the Highlanders from the land as part of the Highland clearances, further devastating the region's population.